Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter game development series. And in this series, we are going to make a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape. Before we begin, let me quickly show you a small prototype that I made to validate this game idea. So as you can see, we have a spaceship here with some nice particle effects. And then we have enemy spaceships spawning at the top and traveling in the opposite direction of the player's spaceship. And if I drag the pointer horizontally or vertically, our spaceship moves accordingly. As this was just a prototype, I didn't add any firepower to player's spaceship. But we'll have that in the final version along with some nice outer space background. Now before we go any further, a small disclaimer. This series might be a little fast paced because I will not go into the basics of game development. So if you are completely new to game development, I would suggest you to watch my previous Flutter game development series in which I have created a game called Dino Run. You can check out that game on Play Store if you want. Also, if it is not possible to watch the whole series, at least watch the first episode where I talk about basics of game loop. It will probably make understanding this series a little easier. So all that being said, now let's start setting up the project for this new game. First, I'll create a new Flutter project called Space Escape. And notice that I'm using Flutter 2.0.2, which is the latest stable version available at the time of recording. So if you're watching this video in future and are facing some issues with a new version of Flutter, let me know in the comments. I'll try to upgrade the GitHub repository to latest version as soon as possible. Okay, so now that this project is ready, I'll quickly increase the font size and I'll remove all the comments from this file. So if you have been following recent Flutter releases, you might know that Flutter now supports sound null safety. Null safety is supposed to make your code more error proof and in some cases a little faster too. So to use null safety, we'll have to use a new Dart SDK in this project. For this, I'll go to the pubspec YAML file and change the minimum Dart SDK version to 2.12.0 and that's it. Now our project will use all the null safety features from Dart. And if I go back to main.dart, you can see that we have already got two errors because of null safety. Both these errors are for the optional input parameters to my homepage class. It says that key and title are marked as non-nullable types, but our constructor says that they are optional. Both these statements are contradictory. So to fix this, I'll make key a nullable type and the title a required property. This solves both the problems. Next, let's get the Flame engine. Flame comes as a normal Flutter package which you can add to your pub spec and start using. Right now, the latest release version is 0.29.3 which is a little old and outdated. But you can also see that a release candidate for the next big and upcoming Flame 1.0.0 is available. This version supports null safety as well as all the three desktop platforms. So to keep this series as future proof as possible, we are going to use the pre-release version of Flame for this project. So let's copy the dependency from installing tab and paste it in our pub spec. Okay, now we have got the Flame engine. And to understand how it works and how to use it, you can refer their official docs available on flame-engine.org. This is a great place to learn about Flame's capabilities and some good practices too. But for getting started right now, we just need to follow a specific folder structure for images and audio assets. If you read the file structure section of the documentation, you'll see that Flame requires us to place all the audio and image assets in audio and image subdirectories placed under an asset directory. So I'll quickly create this folder structure in our project and while we are at it, Let's also add these paths to the asset section of our pub spec so that all these assets placed in these locations get bundled with the app. Next, let's get the required assets for this project. I'll be using some of the free assets from Kenny. So let's head over to kenny.nl. Here, if you go to asset section and then in 2D, you'll find an asset pack called Simple Space. Just click on it and then click download. Once the download completes, I'll copy and extract the downloaded zip file inside the images folder of our project. Here, you can see that same assets are available in multiple formats. Like we have the standalone PNG files for each sprite, 
then we have sprite sheets and we also have vector files technically we can use any of these but i feel that using sprite sheets is a little easier as it requires less lines of code so i'll copy one of these sprite sheets from tile sheet folder into our images folder and now we can delete all the other files now that we have the required assets let's start writing some code so first i'll remove all this code for my home page as we don't need it right now actually we don't even need this my app class so i'll remove that as well now in the run app function instead of my app i'll provide an instance of game widget this is a class from flame engine which injects the underlying flutter widget of a flame game into the flutter widget tree game widget needs a game object as input so let's go ahead and create our own game class and to keep everything organized i'll create a new folder under lib called game this folder will contain all the game related classes so inside this folder let's create a new file called game.dart in this file i'll create a new class called space escape which will extend from base game base game comes from flame engine and is responsible for providing a default implementation for the update render and on resize methods now let's go back to main.dart and set the game property of game widget as an object of space escape if we run this code right now it will work but we won't see anything because right now the game world does not have anything to display so let's try to display something in the game world but to display something we'll need to load the assets before the game loop begins for this let's go to the game.dart file and in the space escape class Let's override the onload method. From the documentation, you can figure out that this method is responsible for loading all the required assets and setting up initial components before the game starts running. Here, I'll call the load method on images to load the image asset. Images is an instance of images class which comes from the default implementation of base game. It is responsible for caching all the loaded image assets so that they can be quickly accessed from anywhere in the game. Here I load the simple space style sheet and since this method returns a future I'll await for it to complete once the image is loaded we can start using it but the image that we have loaded is a sprite sheet and contains multiple sprites so to make it easier for us to select specific sprites from a sprite sheet flame provides a class called sprite sheet so here I'll create a new object of sprite sheet using sprite sheet dot from columns and rows this named constructor takes an image number of columns and number of rows we can get the sprite sheet image from cached images using images dot from cache then number of columns and number of rows can be found from the sprite sheet itself like in this case the sprite sheet contains 8 columns and 6 rows so let's set the columns to 8 and rows to 6 Next we'll have to create an object of component which can display a sprite and can be added to the game. There are multiple types of component classes that Flame provides out of the box. And the one that we want is called sprite component. So I'll create a new sprite component called player. Sprite component needs a sprite to be displayed. And we can get a sprite from the sprite sheet that we just created. So to get a sprite I'll use the sprite sheet dot get sprite by id method this method takes an integer and returns a sprite with that id and from the documentation you can see that the id start from 0 at the top left corner and increases sequentially along each row so let's see which id we should use to display one of the spaceships spaceship at id 4 looks good so let's specify the id as 4 in the get sprite by id next Let's specify an initial size for this sprite component. Later on, we'll see how to change this size when the game resizes. But for now, a size of 64 by 64 will do. And finally, let's specify a position for this component. If you don't specify this position, it will by default get placed at 0,0. But here, I'll display it at the center of the screen. To find out the center, we need the size of screen. This we can get from viewport dot canvas size. And if I divide it by 2 it will give us the center so now that the sprite component is ready let's add it to the game world 
and for this I'll have to use the add method of our game class. And that's it. Let's run this code to see the output. And as you can see, the spaceship sprite is visible in the game. And the reason why the sprite is not exactly at the center is because the anchor point for all the position components is at the top left corner. So when you set their position, Flame places their top left corner at that location. If you want to change this behavior, you can change the anchor point explicitly using the anchor property. So here, if I set the anchor property of player to anchor.center and then hot restart the game, you can see that now the sprite is exactly at the center of the screen. Now before I end this initial setup video, let's make sure that this game launches in full screen. For this, I'll go to the main.dart file and before run app, I'll call widget flutter binding dot ensure initialized. This will allow us to call flame code before run app. And then I'll call flame dot device dot full screen. Now if I save and hot restart the app, you can see that the game is now in full screen mode. So that was it for this video. I hope you were able to follow along. If you got stuck somewhere, do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help as much as possible. All that being said, if you liked the video, hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.